Islandora Claw lesson, led by Diego Pino, Islandora Claw committer. I'm Melissa Inez, your project community manager with the Islandora <sighs> Foundation. Um, having been through some of the basics of Fedora 4 and Claw and how everything is structured this week, Diego is going to take a look at uh, Drupal and how things interact on the, on the source code side, and we're going to be looking at Camel and Carafe. And this is going to be a fairly hands-on, demo-heavy session this week, so lots of opportunity for things to go spectacularly wrong because they're happening live, so please do bear with us. But hopefully we'll once again have a really great opportunity to learn what happens in Claw in the back end. And with that, I will turn it over to Diego. Hello, folks. How are you? I will make this full screen. Okay, so this is our fourth lesson and what I will try to do today is to show you live how our Drupal site or Islandora modules interact to with Fedora using Camel. And we will also see how our new Islandora code is built on the PHP site on Drupal. We will see every module, how they interact what are we reusing from Drupal? Mostly 100%. There is no more customizing there. And how this data that we saw last time really flows inside. So to do this, we need some tools. And basically, we have like our Vagra machine. And to get this working, we need VirtualBox installed, Vagrant. There's some information on how to install that if you don't have that already. All the Git command tools and some free time, a lot. Basically because all the deployment on a local machine on Vagrant depends on the resources you have on your machine. It's a machine inside another machine. When we want to hack our current Claw installation and build this Vagrant virtual machine, we have to deploy it locally. So we need to have our terminals open and then we clone basically the Islandora Claw repository, go into Claw, go into install and just do a background app. This can take some time from a few minutes to maybe even an hour because it basically rebuilds a whole machine. So we are going to do this live but the whole Vagrant installation, not. Because I built last night a cloud server for you. And I did the same I'm telling you to do, but not to do. And I cloned the whole stuff and uploaded it to an OS machine. So to get this started, if you want to interact directly with this, this machine is completely open to anyone to hack, destroy, or mess up. I will ask you to download the Claw Lessons repository from my GitHub account, or if you already have it, pull it, and then go into the Claw Lessons 4 directory. Inside that, you will get a cloud.pm file. That's a key to be able to go into the machine. So you just change the permissions for that chmod 600 cloud.pem and then issue this ssh minus i cloud.pem user is cloud and that's the IP. I will show you how to do this directly on the terminal in a few minutes more. So just to have a, a very quick glimpse on what we'll see today. I told you last time we have like this Drupal 7 XMS working with all our Alandora modules on that side that communicates directly to Solar. We have this obscure magic part, the camel part, not longer so obscure, that communicates with Blazegraph, big data also named that way. And camel is like this type of routing broker transforming mechanism that allows us to sync from Drupal to Fedora back and forth using ActiveMQ messaging system to coordinate. So Camel can know when something changed on the Fedora side, 
via an ActiveFQ JMS message and interact with BlazeGraph and Drupal back and forth. So if something goes wrong, because I'm pretty sure something will go wrong on my machine, it was a late night deployment, we have the very official and very nice working future.alandora.ca. This one works 100%, so in any case, we will use both, and if you can open our uh, browser window with that, it will be very nice. This one is the current Amazon machine I built for you. It has this dynamic IP, very long. Uh, the user for both the Alandora Future and this one is admin on the Drupal side and passes Alandora. Fedora can be seen at uh, port 8018 fc repo slash rest, solar at solar, and big data at slash big data. So, what will we be doing today? We'll focus on the Drupal Islandora modules and how they interact with this. This is our last time very detailed schematic. Basically, we will look at the source code of Drupal, Islandora modules, and we'll see how this interacts with Camel in real time. So, the, our checklist will be understand some basics around Scarf's client. We'll go into Caraf. If I don't know if you remember what Caraf is, but Caraf is like a mini operating system. Really, it's, a, it's an OSGI container that allows different parts of software to interact and to be able to depend on each other and allows us, in particular for, for this demo, to hot deploy camera roads and see how they interact with our services inside. So our camel services run inside Caraf. We will look at Islandora Drupal code and discuss it. We will create a collection in Drupal, an Islandora collection, a Fedora collection in Drupal. We will see how this runs. So we will look in real time how Camel wrote these messages inside. And then we'll look at Fedora to see if it's there. Then we will look at BlazeGraph and see if the triples are there. And we'll also look in Solar to see if Drupal is really indexing this. Obviously, the last three points means everything is working fine. We will see that. If nothing is working fine, we won't see anything. That's the reason we have future.alandora.ca. OK, now going live and beware, because I have a very old keyboard here. I will close this. And I have here. A terminal. Can you see this? Nice. Is this big enough? You can chat inside. Give me some hint. If I should make it bigger. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Benjamin. Okay. SSH. E cloud at PEM cloud and inside. It's working. OK. We're inside the machine. This machine right now is open to the world. And if you can do the same, I can see some people on Drexel.edu already inside. Cool. So the first thing is we have to find our Caraf client. Well, inside a normal installation, this one is an opt Caraf bin. Let's take a look inside this. There's a lot of stuff inside, but what we need is the client. Caraf works like a mini operating system, so we can go inside using a client, like an SSH client, basically. And we can do a lot of stuff inside. So we'll go inside this, and we're inside Caraf with this very nice ASCII art. You can play with this. There's a help inside. And 
if you press the tab you will see all the possible and uh, uh, commands you can issue I don't want to see them right now the first thing to start working with Carve is to understand what is running inside there are different types of containers running inside a Carve some are named bundles that like a package of different functionalities inside I won't go deep inside, inside this and there are also features and features are like stuff that we can hot deploy like roads let's see our features if I see press features and then tap I get all the options I have for this if I make a list of our features I will see a lot of stuff so basically this is all I got inside and I can interact when I'm using my, my roads. I have some owl stuff here, I have clouds, I have FCI repo indexing, and have FCI repo fixity. I have all the goodies that the people at DuraSpace are giving us. And I also have the Alandora stuff. I have also ActiveMQ client, so I can listen to ActiveMQ. And I have a lot of stuff we are not going to use. Basically, what you want to know is if your Alandora services are installed and running. So what you can do is features list and do a grep Alandora. And there they are. We have the camel component, we have our sync gateway, we have our basic image services, we have our collection services, and we have this new Alandora indexing triple store. This last one is something Danny did in the last few weeks and basically adds to our triple store Alandora based triples. So we all also have now the ability to add some type of RDF information, properties that are not all stored on the Fedora side but are only specific to Drupal and Alandora. Why? Because basically when we work on the Fedora side, our paths for objects are like localhost, 8080, fc repo, slash rest, slash something, and that for the real world of linked data means nothing, because our servers can access that. So we are also adding there a real URL. For a resource, the one that is publicly available using Drupal. So, what we want to see really are the logs. We want to see what is happening behind. So, I will do log and I get a nice autocomplete here and I will make a tail, log tail. This will show me a lot starting here. Don't worry about that. Okay, we are at the end here. We're in blue, that's the last thing we're doing. I can see here that I someone started some car sessions inside. Perfectly. So, let's go to our real page. I will start using this old server I built and then we will go also to Alandora, the future Alandora CA. So this is, I will log out, I'll log in again, sorry. Let's use the admin one and password Alandora and log in. Perfectly. So this is a typical Drupal installation with a very nice bootstrap theming. And we no longer have like this split world between Alandora objects and, Fed and Drupal contents. So basically our contents are Drupal contents and they get synced and they get transformed into RDF but they live inside Drupal and they live as contents there. So I will add a content here using the Drupal functionality. And I will go here. If you see, we have like the typical art article and we have basic image. This is new. 
a Drupal node modeling a PCDM object that is provided by Landora and collection. We'll start with collection. This is the simplest one. Collection. So, and then we have a Drupal form. Well, you will say, where, is, where are our XML forms? Well, RDF is really not XML. So basically, it's a lot of properties we're going to put into Fedora 4. So we don't need these very long and complex mods hierarchies anymore. We can use them, of course, but we're not going to use them here. And we have all these fields here that are provided by our modules that are really RDF fields. They have like a namespace, Dublin Core 1.1, an identifier, identifier DC publisher. So basically, our modules will provide for these content types DC namespace RDF fields. Let's start with some little uh, a test collection. Not very original, but whatever. And we'll choose a thumbnail for this. My favorite one, the blue lobster. We have here an option to define which our parent collection will be. In this case, I will choose just for the root. And those here will stay that way because we will get those triples back from Fedora after Fedora created this. We ask you has members, child resources in Fedora, and contributor in this cause will be the Islandora Cloud Lessons Fault. Perfect. I don't know if folks has plural or not. I'm not very good at English, but anyway. Let's save this. But before I save this, I will make this here and save. Let's see what happens. It's uploading probably my image still to Drupal first. So no camel in place. And hey, something is happening here. Well, let's look at this. This looks very complex, but it's not that complex. Let's go up, 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 up. Yeah, yeah, we get something red here. Don't worry about that. I will explain why it's red. Up, 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 up. And here, we were here, right. Again. Sorry, this is real time. Am I missing something? Yes, I can't. With this big stuff and big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aha. Here. Okay. Basically, what we are seeing here is all the roads and message interchange that happened behind scenes inside Caraf, inside Camel. And what is happening here is like when we send something to Drupal, Drupal issues a command to an endpoint inside Camel. And this endpoint process something that is now named a message it was before a content and transform it using a lot of different roads roads are like a piping system so we have like these different endpoints that go in they take this message they transform that message and then resend that message to another endpoint that do some other crazy stuff with that and then they build something from that and send it to different other endpoints and at the end they can also recollect information and send it back to another point. So this 
piping system has some very nice functionalities that are different to our handmade piping systems you could build like using PHP only. The main thing for me at least is that we have like a fail safe system. Our messages, if they can be delivered to an endpoint inside Camel, they can be re-delivered and re-delivered. And we can define how many times Apache will tr try this. This is good. So we don't depend on something that happens one time, it fails, we're dead. Let's look at this one. We have here a direct root named create collection. And we have here a definition that means redelivered enabled. So we can have this redelivered. This create collection endpoint goes to another one named create collection sparkwell. And that goes to another named collection service node to Sparkle. You see that? Okay. And what happens here is like this one calls Talent Dora producer, which is in turn PHP. But now on the Drupal side, this piece of PHP is called and run from the camel part. Basically because we are good at PHP. So we do all this crazy JSON content Drupal transformation to RDF in PHP. And OK, what happens here? We get also here an active message. There, a session started. And we're listening to that. Why? Because thanks to this last Danny's commit, we're also putting information directly on ActiveMQ from Drupal. Well, this little message here gets listened by our Island Door Triple Store Index. And it consumes this message and it sends, it uses this queue. Active messages can have queues and topics. Topics are stuff that you read one time and they're gone and they don't persist, queues are more persistent. Okay, and that one then goes to repo directly. We have this node, we're passing the new node ID, and we process all this stuff, new endpoint, new endpoint, and this one last is the big data one. And big data is our blaze graph or triple store. Okay, let's see what we get. Well, this Alnor producer transforms our original message that came from Drupal into RDF and builds this. First, Adelaide. Uh huh, uh huh, and then that. Great. Let's keep looking. Well, now we have like this new, this is an FCA repo message that is coming from Fedora. We can see all this created by, loss modified by. Let's go further, further, further. We don't have to go to each of these ones. Well, this one is interesting. No we will handle a node absurd event. After stuff got into Drupal, we'll have to send back, sorry, into Fedora, we have to send back information that was added by Fedora to Drupal. So we have this absurd event. We are listening to the types of events. Something was created. And so we authenticate using a service also def defined by Drupal Island Dora modules, we go into the authentication of Drupal. We get a cookie, that cookie gets parsed, we authenticate, we have this Drupal login, we have an endpoint, and then we post information. 
and we also update our triple store and there we go and well here's the red part and I will explain you why we have this red part basically we have we are doing some fixes here that when we log in using the service to Drupal we have like a little problem because Drupal doesn't allow multiple users to be logged at the same time using password and login. Basically it expects that if the user is already logged in then you use a token and a session identifier and don't try to log again. And for some strange reason we try to log again. So it spits this out, but this is very good because we can see what happened. Basically, we have this message history and we see that this wrote within the processor, that one that took that time to process went to that other road. And if you see like this road ID, this is the starting road ID, the 18, has multiple processor IDs. So this road would handle like ActiveMQ topic, will read a topic from Fedora, will set a property, will set that all property, will look if the headers have Fedora info, and if that, it will direct handle node absurd event, the one that tries to put data back to Drupal, and will get this one, get Drupal out info, get the cookie form catcher, set the headers, put that in the internal catcher, and when nothing was found, then try to authenticate. Well, it found nothing and tried to authenticate and was wrong. And then Drupal login, remove headers, set headers, set the body, username admin, password alandora, and tries to log in. Well, Drupal doesn't like that. So we get these errors, but we can debug these errors very easy. And then if you look, it will try it, and it worked. Let's look at how this worked. <clears throat> Let's forget about this long, long terminal output. Well, we have a test collection here inside. It was created, and look here, this Fedora pad is a real pad, and this Fedora has parent is a real has parent and the DC contributor are all under a clawless of fault. Well, if you see this, this, this doesn't look very pretty, but that is not longer our Alandora true responsibility. We have all the Drupal tools to make this content look the way we want to make it look. And we can use all the Drupal views tools to build tools based on this, or filter some fields and connect them to one another and build whatever awesomeness we want. But the coolest thing about this, at least for us, is that Drupal is acting like a preprocessor of stuff, all a catching mechanism. So I can just disconnect the whole Fedora stuff if I want, and I still have a repository, and I have, still have triples here inside. Because very deep, deep inside Drupal, Drupal is RDF enabled. And we have RDF A at our disposal, so people can find this. Well, if I go edit, I have this Fedora pad, this Fedora as parent, and all the other stuff we put there. Let's close this. Let's look what happened on the Fedora side. Okay, let's open this. We have here some new resources created. And you will ask why they have like this big long pads there. Well, in the first two lesson lessons I told you, eh, let's create someone, something, create basket and blueberry and not these long pads. Well, this is really nobody's fault and it's okay. 
when you don't give Drupal a look or a desired path, Drupal tries to, uh, sorry, Fedora tries to be as smart as possible to distribute this information inside the node system. And this node system is built to make the internal storage as efficient as possible. So what Fedora does is to use an internal pit monitor. So it builds an UID that then takes the first part of the UID and creates some pair tree nodes. Those little nodes there, let's go to the 63, for example, or the F6, are really no RDF resources, are just a way to make this look as close as possible to a tree. So you don't get like this huge list of objects all existing in the root. It tries to distribute them to our parts. So you get this long number, but we don't know what this means. So what have we done on the Drupal side? We create a UID for you. This one. And I will make this maybe bigger so you can see it. This NFO UID D1, DC, whatever basically means we are giving this resource a path, the path you have there, the big one, but we are also giving it a local UID that is used by Drupal Islandora Mix to identify this resource. So making a very close mimic to what we had before on the previous Alandora world. This one goes into the SparkQL endpoint or triple store. So we have a mapping between this number and this long pad, this one. So we can ask directly using Alandora, Fedo uh, using also the triple store, Fedora, hey, give me back the resource identified by this, and it will give, it will go search for this path and extract all the RDF. This is practical in terms for normal users because you don't have to deal with the whole paths. They are get like a bit obscured for you. They are still there, you can use them, but you can still identify a resource, an RDF resource by one unique UID. And if you look here, my first collection, this one has some data there. I'm, I think I'm not looking at the first one I created back here. Let's go home. I suppose you're also creating stuff here. Is that mine? that uh, test collection right sorry test collection and we have this parent which is the base the root and we have all these mixing types if you compare this view with a current fedora 450 version you will see a lot of more mixing types and more properties uh, the kind people at fedora remove some of this from the display because they're very specific to the behind implementation. But we also have here this PCDM collection, which is nice. We are trying to make something PCDM compliant and I will talk about PCDM when we go to our in our next sessions to our microservices. And we have this and it has this creator. Cool. So let's go to big data. Let's hope it's there. Yeah, it's there. Let me see. Come on, big data. There. Okay. Let's try very something very simple. Well, 
what made that wrong. Namespaces use, sorry. There, no. Oh. Dyslexia. So subject, object, and so predicate, and object. There we go. Well, people will hate me. I didn't use namespaces. A correct Spark world query should have namespaces at the top defined. This is what good people do. But since I'm live here and I don't want to make more mistakes, I just said to Big Data A, hey, use all the defined namespaces that are inside and just issue this query. So if you look at this, I'm just showing everything we have right now inside. It's a long page. But our subject here is our, our real path inside Fedora. If you look at that, and we have the mixing types, we have the RDF types, and we have a lot of more information, and I will go some pages forward because it's not that much information. We have creators, we have these mixing types, and look, we have node 1, node 2, node 6 that is not anymore a Fedora pad. This is a real URL form or server. This is very cool. Same information for my first collection pad in different subject. And if we keep looking at this, you will see all the information that was stored. So this road is working, and it's working fine. And we have here Node 7, Semantic Desktop Ontologies, UID, and we have a UID. And we have a UID. So using very, very simple SparkWell, we can get, based on UID, our path, a real path, and get all the information from Fedora, or we can use directly the node URL and get then the UID and then get the path or get all the mixings we want just using Sparkwell and Sparkwell 1.1. Yeah, Adam, you know this stuff, so go. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so we have big data. Let's see at what happened at the solar side. I hope I don't run out of time. Well, this is raw solar, solar 4.10.3, no longer stuck to these old solar systems. Great. Let's look at collection. And hey, what is happening here? Let's see if I have something inside. Execute query, nothing found. Not bad. Why? Because basically we are now since synchronizing stuff from Drupal to Solar. So we can do the synchronization directly. I don't remember where. This is a good question. Let me see if I remember how it is done. This is our search. Probably on configurations. Apache Sol search. Okay. We have three items remaining. 0% have been sent to server. I will show you how this works, but it doesn't mean it has to be offline always. You can make it happen immediately. Right now, we're doing it offline. So I will just tell it index queue content. It will take every 15 or I can tell them to let the search and I can tell them what I want to index. In this case we have all our content types here. 
and execute content. Okay. This stuff did fail. And I go here. Collection. Hey, numdocs tree, maxdocs tree. Let's make a query. Wow, we have all our data. Well, this is not so cool. We're used to having that. But we don't longer rely or need to have like this very specific Islandora solar interface connection or whatever. So if you want to facet, then you just install the Apache faceting system as a Drupal module and we have it working. And we also get like our content and our teasers and we get everything we need here, a bundle name so we can make some very cool queries and we have the URL and the lab label and if we have some extra data we want to add then we just modify our schema XML as we did before in the previous work. So this is cool, we have big data working, we had Fedora working and we have Solar working and still most of this stuff is Drupal based. Okay, this is the boring part, but we need to see this. Basically because our new Islandora Drupal modules are very slim. That means coding new solution packs is pretty easy. We'll make this again bigger, 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 bigger. I'm here at Islandora Claw, Claw repository, and I'm inside the Drupal folder. The Drupal folder holds every module Danny and Nick or Nick and Danny built for us at the beginning and then we Nigel, Jared and me have been putting some little cl uh, coding cleanups there. Mostly our work has been on the other side but because this one works basically. We have the Islandora base module. This one is responsible for defining our RDF mappings, some basic functionality. We have this one that adds some extra information for the solar, but it's not longer a whole Apache solar implementation. We have the basic image one, the collection one. This one adds DC terms for RDF. This one Alandora the led by service URI is a URI service. It's a based on Drupal service. We have this one, the medium size service. We have also mods for those metadata XML lovers. We have mods. And we have this RDF mapping service and a thumbnail service. So this is very distributed. If you think and how Fedora works with resources, it also makes sense. We don't have to have this big solution pack that deals with everything. Let's look at Islandora one. This is the most simple one to understand and will give us a glimpse on how this stuff works inside. Well, this one is the Islandora module itself. And we start by defining some namespaces. We have all these namespaces we're going to use and they'll look very, very similar to what we have inside Fedora 4. Then we have here a config menu, very simple. We have this that connects the services API with Alandora. We have now this hooks RDF namespaces, the ones we define here, get put into the whole Drupal namespace system and we have like an Alandora entity load. Well, where are our object view load system not anymore needed? This is a base entity hook from Drupal and we basically are putting our information there. We're telling that for each entity, and if that is different, as the node is there, then we get our namespaces and we invoke the PCDM file mapping. Cool. 
And then we have this one, the node post insert, that basically loads our entity using UID. Goes out if we don't have the information on the database, database because we're looking at Drupal. We include this one, the triple store, and we just run for that node a triple store update. The reason you had like a subject, a full URL from Drupal. And the post update, same triple store. The late triple store. And then this is the base system we use for interacting with Camel, our services endpoint. We're using a, a, a Drupal module named services that allows to build a very simple REST server on Drupal. And that one allows us to authenticate even one failing, as you saw before, allows us to fetch remotely a whole content, update a whole content remotely, and do whatever we want with in terms of content and users with Drupal using an endpoint. And this one is just a definition of what endpoints we're going to use. We have like retrieve, update, delayed index for nodes. We can make relationships. Yeah, Drupal allows to relate one node to another. We can attach files. We have the RDF mapping. We have the thumbnail one. And we have the users. And users can log in, log out, and use tokens. Endpoint. And that is all we have on the Alandora module, which is pretty cool. Because if you remember our old Alandora module, it was a, with a lot of subclassing, subclassing of Tuk and modifying stuff and hooks specific to Alandora. For example, we don't need to hook anymore to data stream modifications of that. We just use rules. Alandora. And we have an include, and this include has admin farms or fields, the ones we're adding and seeing, RDF, some mapping, the triple store, and some utilities. You can look at them when you have some time. They're very simple to understand. So let's look at solution pack. Drupal. You will see why is this so simple. Well, basic image. Wow, no includes there. This is just three files, a module, an install, and an F info. Module. Well, we define here a image content type, island or basic. We define an RDIF F type for this content type, and we define some fields, field medium size. We use the hook node info to create this new content type. This content type is not a custom entity, it's based on a node definition inside Drupal. So it uses the same database, the same table, the same table definition. And by doing this, we just added a new item inside add content in Drupal. We have like this Islandora basic image form that just returns a node content form. Cool. It's a normal node content form. In this case, we could, if we want to make this more fancy, add some other extra forms. You're already used to building forms in Drupal. But this does exactly the magic we need. We connect this content type to a node content form. And then we have this form ID alter, nothing new, to add a basic image upload, a collection picture. When we create an image, we can define into which collection it goes, which uses simple SQL queries from Drupal World. And we just move the title up. And unshift something here. And then the submit handler. Well, <clears throat> the submit handler is a normal Drupal submit handler. It just takes the form state, it just removes the parent collection, it looks if that exists, then 
if it doesn't exist, then just take the parent and set it there. Easy. If you look, this is something different and very interesting. Right now we're using, well, I don't know how, how deep you have been developing or modifying our old XML module. But the XML module, XML Farms module, sorry, doesn't use localization for this. Well, yes, exactly, Rosie. We can make our content language based. Undefined, undefined, sorry, und means nothing more that we are not telling Drupal what language this is. But with some minor code improvement, which are been going to be done during maybe the sprint, we can make this happen very easily because it's Drupal interface. Okay, nothing more here than at parent UID. And then we have this mapping, which calls this, so we get the RDF type, and then we have this post insert. Basically, what that means is after inserting data inside the Drupal database, do some minor processing here and send it to where Caraf URL Alandora image parent collection. It's just an HTTP URL request sending our, our node that got serialized and then we have this sending to Caraf, which means camel, camel processes and we forget about this. And then we have this node post update. In case of updating, we do a very similar stuff. We get our objects, we encode our node. If this is a multi-part message. Our node get encoded in JSON, and then we send it to Caraf. In case of delete, we remove it and send it to Caraf. And that was our solution pack. Indeed, very simple. The good news is, if you need help, you can still rely on our discussion groups, but you can also ask in all the other Drupal discussions, because it's Drupal. Collection module, even simpler. Look at this. Mapping, parent, post insert, Post update, post delete, caraf. So there's no longer magic behind this. You don't have to belong to this very obscure club of people that know Turk perfectly. You can start hacking and coding, and that's what we're going to do during these lessons. We'll build a new solution pack directly using what you know from Drupal, and if you don't know from Drupal, you will find a lot of information in the web world. That said, I will leave that this is my uh, GitHub account, but I will leave this cloud.pm around for a week. So if you don't have a machine big enough to play or you want to see something working behind the scenes and in front end because this one is pretty cool. That's the Alandora Cloud Sandbox, the future Alandora CI node, which is also faster than the machine I have and I'm sure works better. But you don't have SSH access here. If you want to see how it works without putting your own machine to work, you can access the one I gave you. This one, EC2, 548812, well, you know that, that name, it's in, in the slideshow. And use it during this week, I will shut it down on Sunday, because nobody works on Sunday, except Nick, Melissa, Jared, me, and you. And that is all because we're running out of time. Sadly, I, I wanted to show you more about, well, real time is sometimes a lot 
slower than just showing slides. So if you have like questions, ideas, uh, whatever, I'm fully open here to answer them as soon as I can. As soon as I can type them, basically. And thank you very much for being here today.